thank you very much, Lisa, uh, the usual tour de force. And thank you to the Party of European Socialists for their support for this event. And also thank you to the Solidar member, Olaf Palmer, International Centre in Sweden, for nominating tonight's winner. And we're just doing a little bit of a rearrangement so we can commemorate this moment uh, suitably. Uh, so please don't be put off by that. You take this and have a chat with me while he takes pictures of you. Um, so, Zita is all there. I know, I know. Zita talked there uh, about the situation. He said, Can you tell us, you've been working on these issues for nearly 20 years now. Do you feel you are making progress? Definitely, definitely. The violence we're facing every single day means to us that there is a progress. Um, because I believe every social movement first faces the lack of recognition, the, the neglection, and the bullying, and the violence. And then there comes the, um, the legal and social recognition. I think that the path, we are having the first three, and then we're struggling for the last two, for respect and recognition. And, and how do you see the challenges that lie ahead? I mean, you're underlying there some of the achievements, how far you've come. What is the biggest challenge now that you face in the immediate future? I would say the hate crimes against LGBT are the biggest challenge. Turkey is holding the highest number of hate murders in the council of Europe and the third highest numbers in the world after Brazil and Iran. Um, so that would be the biggest challenge. I have to also mention about the Kalsia magazine, which is exactly how Kalsia started. In a, in a country where the media is either owned by the by uh, money-oriented businessmen or the prime minister himself. Being an independent media organization is not easy. Being an independent LGBT media organ is not easy at all. So it's also the former editor-in-chief um, before me was charged with three years for publishing pornography content. Um, so after all these things, it's uh, Every single month the magazine is being printed and I think that's a great story in, in a country like Turkey. Absolutely. Well, speaking as a fellow journalist, I commend and congratulate you for that. And just one last question, if I might, I've asked the other award winners, I'd like to ask you, how important is it to you and to your organisation to get an award like this? Uh, before that, I must also underline the importance of lack of social um, recognition for lesbians or bisexual women because probably people uh, don't take it as important um, or they think what can two women possibly do in bed when in fact they can do a whole bunch of things in bed. <laughs> <laughs> so I would have to underline the importance of, of lesbians and bisexual women and Thank you. And, and, and for what it means for what it means, I am by luck uh, out here on the stage enjoying this beautiful evening and not sitting at home like the rest of my team is. And it's again by luck that Carlos is the one getting the award and not any other LGBT organization in the world. Um, so this award goes to every LGBT human being in this room, in Brussels, in Turkey, and in the world. Those who die. Um, Thank you very much. Who died for, for who they were, for the, per, for the person they found on it. Thank you so much. Thank you.